Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey, real quick, we want to make sure that you know about this timestamp feature because we're going back to longer uh, version videos, uh, especially on our member channel, and we want to make it where it best serves you. So, another little service from How to Wrench, go down in the description and you can click right where you want to jump to, and boom, it'll go right there. All right, hope that helps out. Here's the video. I thought I'd do a quick little video, kind of walk around the shop and talk about the videos that are coming up. We made that video last couple days about how we're going to do really in-depth, long videos, the ones that take forever to make and produce and all that content. And uh, I just want to say thanks. Like the, the amount of support, the amount of, you know, uh, you know thank yous, great comments, uh, likes, shares even. Uh, we're stoked. We, we're really happy for that feedback. It's YouTube's a YouTube's a weird place, man. People get crazy butthurt sometimes, and like you just don't get it. But uh, I, you know, we did that video, and there's always one asshole. Like all the time, it just seems like there's always got to be one. So, you know, we kick those people off the channel. You know, you ban people. So you're like, get out of here. I'm not gonna fight with you. You're not gonna be an idiot. Guy called me a homeless beggar. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny because I thought about doing a spoof video, but I don't want to make fun of the homeless because I got a heart because I had a mother, you prick. Anyway, I am going to show you some of the stuff that's going on, like the upcoming videos, what we've been working on, all that kind of stuff here. We got some neat stuff, and I just think I have some fun stuff to talk about. And what I realized is the people that I do talk to, they're almost, I'm going to call you my friends because that's what I feel like. And in this COVID shit, I am lonely. And I was talking to my friend Crystal at Merced Omissions Day and just thinking, ugh, this is so crazy. Can't wait to get out and do stuff. But hey, how about we get back to fun stuff? I want to show you some of the stuff that's going on at the shop. And let's do that right now. So with that being said, I'm going to start with this guy. I bought this tire machine. My boy Grant uh, called me up. He said, man, hey, there's a tire machine on Craigslist. 400 bucks, And it's a snap-on. And we all know, uh, I guess, I mean, I would think most of us know, like, so this, this is an actual snap-on, not a sticker. But they, you know, contract out a lot of stuff. Made in Italy. We know that How to Wrench likes Italian stuff. Ooh, look at that. So, uh, the dude seemed pretty cool. He told me, hey, you know, the, the, the bead breaker is not working so great. And probably need some seals or whatnot, and he just didn't want to mess with it anymore. I'm like, that's fine, I'll take my chances, you know. And didn't even haggle with the guy. I was like, that's that's you know, good enough. And you gotta kind of weigh this stuff out because here's the reality: you can buy a brand new tire machine that will do what this does. So we need it to break beads, we need it to clamp the rim, and we need to be able to rotate so we can whip it off and not have to work so hard with our little manual ones. But I ain't gonna lie, my little bike master one works good. You gotta know how to use it. And you gotta use a lot more muscle than you do with one of these. So I get this thing, I'm all excited. We start messing with it, get a part. And what I thought was gonna be the, the part that might be a little more expensive to fix or whatnot was the drum itself. And it seems to be working. And kind of one of the things, like when I go to make this video, it's gonna be really about, you know, do you know how systems work? You know, I don't have a manual for this. I mean, you take it apart and you start to look at nuts and bolts and you got to know electrical, you got to know fittings, you got to know airlines. You, you just got to be able to look at it and go, how do I think this works? You know, excuse me, how do I think this works? It's been a long day. And anyway, we started getting apart and I, and I just like took my airline and I shoved air where it needed to go and I could pull that ram and the air would release on the other side. And I could reverse it, and it would go both ways, and it get to a stopping or holding point. I feel really good, like I really think it's working. I got one more test I'm gonna do, where I'm gonna block one of the the ends with a ball valve, so I can see if it'll hold, like if it doesn't leak. But I still gotta do that. But I'm feeling pretty confident, and so we started leaning towards the foot valve itself. So this is upside down; it sits on the ground down here, and you push it with your foot to operate that. Right? Well, look at this. You know, I've never seen one of these before. I never had a part. You got this multi-port valve. We feed it in the center. One line goes out to one side of the ram. The other line goes to the other. And, and when you push that air across, it has to go somewhere. So it's got these two filters on here. As you fill it in here, it pushes out and so on. And look at it. Just a bunch of little ports 
trying to figure out how this works. I had a little part looking at it. You know how like you're working on something and you're like, oh, look at that, big crack. There it is, that's the problem, that's plastic. It probably shouldn't have a crack in it. It was leaking like crazy, air was just puking out of there. But then when I pulled it apart and put it on the bench, I started really looking at it and going, you know, that don't mean nothing. That's just a leak and that's a filter. That's not stopping the RAM from doing what it needs to do. There's something wrong. That's why I got one little more test I want to do. But as I kind of looked at this and saw some of this was swollen and the plastic of it, and I started doing my research online, it, you know, all the machines seem to be metal today, even the quote unquote cheaper machines. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I still was like, nah, you know, I'll, I'll keep snap-on parts and a snap-on machine, whatever, you know. And I started getting online and looking at that. Take a guess how much that is. Take a guess how much that piece of plastic is. One, two, three. Yeah, I, I, you, you thought $400 too, right? Like, that's normal. $400? What the? Hmm. I couldn't believe it was $400. And that was the one that was in stock. I, I found one for $270. Woo, that's a deal. Unavailable. So I start looking around, looking around, looking around these machines, all bragging about their metal ones. So I went and started looking at their parts. I started looking at their $100 valves. And I started thinking, dang, now we're talking. That's a good deal. I can get this thing for 100 bucks. So I start looking around to purchase one. I start finding them on eBay for $22. I'm like, what What in the... There ain't no way. So I keep looking, keep looking. I find on Amazon, this thing was 16 bucks. It's metal. And this is why you got to have skill sets. This is why you got to know and be able to be willing to risk it and take a look at some stuff. All I got to do, it's got four easy mounts on there. It's already mounted. The, the shaft's already pre-drilled the roll pin. It's not a lot of pressure on this. That spring pulls it back into its center when you let off the pedal. But man, all I gotta do, I gotta drill four holes. I could put washers under there if I want. I'll probably take advantage since I have the tools and pop out some uh, cool little spacers out of the lathe. But, but it doesn't matter, I'm just talking about like, it's just so simple. And then I'll just cut this, the old piece off here, make a collar, I'll roll pin that one, roll pin that one, I'm done, done. Like 16 bucks, I'm super stoked about that because that like gets me back into going, okay, it was worth it. And then in the end, it's fun. And then in the end, I can clean up all the other crap that needs to be done with this, but not too bad. So I got that video coming up. Uh, another video, just thinking on the fab side. I didn't pick up my cords today. What's going on with that? So on the fab side, I finally used my mill. And this is exciting stuff for me because I'm not a machinist, man. I'm just screwing around i mean most of this stuff that was done these cutaways <laughs> was literally done with band saws we got into a little bit of milling on the old three and one i mean a little bit but it's really hard to clamp much of anything down on this and the head is so far away it chatters like crazy and i just never really felt comfortable trying to take on too much so i'm like boom and get a dedicated one super excited about this right so i want to go use this because uh my full-time job i needed to uh, teach some curriculum around snap rings and i've been seeing people do all these videos on how to improve your uh your uh presses like just some convenient stuff and this was one somebody came up with that you snap ring that boom so it doesn't pop through on you you know when you're lifting that heavy thing and you're kind of muscling with it whatnot and sometimes you push that a little too hard and the pin just wants to go right on through no more isn't that cool what i just had so fun with the project is doing it and i had to figure it out i had to go well, how do you do that how do you get that groove and i was like no nah, you can't cut that metal that thin you can't cut that metal to 45 thousandths of an inch like that, that ain't gonna work you know like how am i gonna do that Maybe if I get in focus, it helps. And then I kept trying multiple ways of holding the fixture and getting it down. Finally got to work. Super stoked. The trick was to get flat. I was trying to do it in the air. And then obviously I had that flex. I traded stones. I had to just do the thing. Get the cutter and get to getting. And, uh, but here's the story of this one and why there's going to be some videos. Is so I get this thing. I plug it in. I'm all excited and wouldn't run. You know. I'm like, no, man, I get screwed on two buys in a row. Are you kidding me? Come on. And so what do you do? 
you kind of just put your big boy pants on and start to follow things. Popped in here. Wow, there's one hell of a mouse nest in here. You just gonna have to trust me, it's all in the garbage now. And it ate the wires up. Uh, I'm unplugged, so I can dig around in here. But this one in particular, see that? That had to be replaced. It was touching this or whatnot and kept popping the breaker and intermittently running. And I, I don't know if it damaged this contactor, but now this isn't working very well. If I push it in manually, boop, it'll go, motor will run. I can, you know, use the mill. But I'm going to finish fixing it, you know. I want to be able to go up here, be able to use my starts and stops normal and not have to get in the back with a screwdriver. But it's kind of cool to be able to figure it out, isn't it? Isn't that what we do as mechanics, technicians? Don't we figure things out? Hopefully, with every repair, it gets faster and faster and easier and easier, right? Look at all these carburetors. We get a lot of carburetors. This one here, guy watched all the videos, did all the, you know, same methods. He said, man, I cannot figure it out. I'm missing something. So I'm going to take all these carb videos. I'm going to put them in a course with actually quizzes and assessments and have it to where you can go through it and get a certificate at the end of it. How cool would that be? You know, to really dig in, to really learn it. But on this one here, I had a pretty good suspicion. It was the middle, well, how loose that is. No fitting is ever going to be that loose. So I, I show some of the stuff, uh, you know, guys, I've been on here for a long time. You've seen so much of this in other videos. Maybe it was a oil leak on a motorcycle, you know, on a clutch cover or something, but principles apply. How to find a leak. Pretty cool. How about proving it, right? So on the member channel and then on my website, I'm going to start selling the real long in-depth videos. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be way better to go be a member because it'd be the best dollar nine nine cents you ever spent is getting hour-long videos of this stuff. I'm going to throw them on my website for 20 bucks. see if people buy them, support them. You know, there's plenty of people that got this figured out. I'm probably way behind the game on trying to, you know, make a living at it. But that's what's coming up. Got that one. You know, when it comes to doing the O-rings, the reason that video is going to be really valuable is like when you get these, you know, carb kits, as cool as they are, they don't come with the middle O-rings. This is in for the same thing. It doesn't come with these. So what you end up having to do is you have to try and figure out how can I size them. But look at all these O-ring kits. Some of these will work and some won't. Do you know? Do you know which brand, what the material type because that's a lot of labor and a lot of trouble to split those carbs and get all the way down in there and then find out a month later that they swelled and they're leaking. That'd be a bad day if it leaks down onto the bike and causes a fire. Want to see another one? I got I to gotta hide some stuff. I can't show you all the tricks yet. I did a little teaser one on this not too long ago, but how to get out stripped. Let me get and broken jets this jet way down inside there it was all the way the threads are way down here uh yeah that one they're way down here that thing was stuck way down there guy called me wanting to know if i had a carb i said why do why do you need a carb that's a honda oh it's got broke off jets so ship it to me i got some tricks Probably been watching this one. This thing's pretty cool, huh? This one's carbs too. This is a lot of stuff, man. It had pinched wires. Wait till you see the close-up video on that. These were pinched down in this bracket. It's got goofy silicone shit on it that I don't know. It had hoses left unhooked from the last mechanic. It's really funny. My buddy's fixing my Mac right now. And he goes, hey man, you know you got screws missing on your Mac? Like, ah, I just had in for repair. Always sucks following the last person and finding stuff like that. Another, uh, you know, you guys are cool. If you're still watching this video, you're super cool. Remember that uh, carburetor I said I was going to try and weld up? Yeah, it didn't work. There's going to be a video coming out on that. I was just pissed and screwing around on the end to try and make a point. But, uh, yeah, part two's coming to that. That didn't work. I was really super hopeful until I read all the comments from all the welders, like all my welding friends, and they were like, dude, no, nah, man, that's going to be tough. Or that 
won't be, you know, I don't know. And as soon as I read and even talked to a few friends, I was like, you know what, that ain't gonna work. But we kept going, we tried. It's already broke, what are you gonna do? I'm at the point where I'm rambling. I've probably showed you, you know, some of the most recent projects. This is the one that breaks my heart. We've been a year on this lift and just got it done. Full production video. Our first really like actual how to wrench produce commercial for a manufacturer. Super exciting. COVID's got us on hold. Man, you, when, when he gets to the point of releasing this lift, this thing is so awesome. I got three of them kind of spoiled from being part of that project but a million hours later but front and rear drops tool trays look at the base of that thing i don't know you i don't know if you're really realizing this i mean look how high that is let me see if i can set my phone down check this out look at this <laughs> isn't that crazy I mean, this thing is awesome. Safety, foot-operated safety stuff. It's cool. But now, dang COVID, it's causing all kinds of scares and crap with people. It even comes with a condor chuck. All right, friends, we are going to call it a night. I have been uh, working like crazy nights and weekends in the shops. My full-time job in the day. It's more than uh, consuming. Teaching, been teaching again. Uh, teaching remotely in Africa. That's that's been pretty wild. I, if many of you don't know, I went there and actually taught. Got to teach a couple of times back in uh, December and then in uh, January, February. And oh man, it's been awesome. What a company to work for. I've really been enjoying it. Uh, the drone aviation industry, plus they're in medical into saving lives. It's it's been awe-inspiring to be around people who care so much, and I think it's you know always a, a good uh, place to be in and the people to be around because it makes you think about what you do, what you touch, really lines up with probably the reason I do all this, all this stuff. All right, all right, my friends, I'm going to call it, like I said, I'm going to really call it night. So, as always, please like, share, subscribe, make it a great day, and as always, keep wrenching. Talk to you soon.